Hi. In this presentation today, I want to share with you four things not to do in your effort to save your marriage, even though your spouse is not present, even though you are separated. Four things not to do to save your marriage. And then I will share with you five things to do to save your marriage, even though you are separated. The first thing you should not do, you should not plead. No whining, no pining, no crying. I know it's difficult when you are married and the love of your life just told you it's over. These are words that are hard to digest, difficult to assimilate. It's difficult. As a matter of fact, after 24 years counseling couples and individuals in different parts of the world, I've seen your tears and I've felt your brokenness. I have a sense of how painful it is to be separated from your spouse. The marriage that you looked forward to, that you hoped, from a child that this was supposed to be your dream marriage. Now you are separated and you want your spouse back. The tendency is to cry, to beg, to whine, to threaten. But may I share with you something today? Usually that is an exercise in futility. Normally that does not work. And I'll tell you why. You see, you should always move from a position of strength. Your spouse has left you. In his mind or in her mind, they're going to something better or someone better. So the last thing you'd want to do is for them to get the impression of you that you are weak. That you are less than what they are leaving you for. And that's exactly what happens when you start crying and pleading, oh, I've, I've invested so much in this marriage. I've been with you for so long and now you're leaving me. I cannot take it. Oh, if you leave me, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to just end it. You know what one lady did? Her husband was leaving her. She went outside and on the asphalt, she banged her head and banged her head until it started bleeding. What do you think the husband did? Oh, he jumped in his car and he drove past her. The point is, you must understand something here. You must understand the whole psychology of relationships. When you push, they pull. When you push, they pull. So cease pushing. It's time for you to take charge of yourself. So the first thing you should not do when you are separated from your spouse and you want them back, is to plead. Please come back. How can I live without you? No, no crying. No whining, no threatening. Certainly not. The next thing you should not do is no unnecessary crying. No unnecessary crying. And I say unnecessary because in the beginning you may feel impressed to cry, and of course I can understand it, because sometimes crying is therapy for your soul. So you feel like crying and you just vent. You unburden your soul, so you cry. That's okay. But it should never be crying just to get them back just to give the impression that, oh, you, they are making you suffer so badly. I'm hurting so much from what you have done. 
I cannot live through this because you are leaving me. Certainly not. As I said before, you must be operating from a position of calmness, gentleness, and firmness. So number two, no unnecessary crying. Number three, don't start fighting. Don't start fighting. Don't tell them words to hurt them. Those will only push them further away from you. In other words, those are counterproductive to the goal you are trying to realize. Don't start fighting. Don't use words to malign and discredit them. Oh, you are worthless. Imagine you are leaving the kids. I can't believe it. No, certainly not. You see, the fact is, if you do the wrong thing, you will get the wrong results. But if you do the right thing, you get the right results. And so the wrong, one of the, the wrong thing to do at this stage is to start fighting. So don't start fighting. Because no, remember I say you want to operate from a state, a position of strength, not weakness. They don't, they, you must not allow them to see you as less. Understand something here. Your spouse must always see you as attractive. And weakness is not attractive. What was it that attracted to them to you in the first place? It was because they, they saw something that they wanted to be a part of. Something that magnetized them. Something that inspired them. To, have, to want to have companionship with you, something of strength. At this stage of the relationship, you don't want to be otherwise. So I'd like to drive this home. If your spouse, if your spouse has left you, your home, the matrimonial home, and you want them back, you must change your mindset from quarreling and crying and whining and pining change your mindset and this is what we're gonna uh, i'm trying to demonstrate it as a matter of fact i have a 14-day boost program where i go in depth and show you exactly how to do this how to get your spouse back even though they don't want the relationship so the third thing you should not do is to start fighting number four the fourth thing you should not do don't hover and by this I mean, don't shut them down. Don't ask their neighbor to check upon them and to give a phone call when they're in and when they're out. Don't put a GPS on their car. Don't shut them. For it shows you as being dependent and weak. As though you cannot live without the marriage. I'd like you to develop this mindset. When your marriage is in trouble and you're losing your spouse for somebody else, start develop this mindset. My happiness is not hinged to my marriage. It is not my marriage that make me happy and so you are going to now seek to regain your strength for it is that strength that's going to make you irresistible to your spouse and attract them back to you okay so those are the four things and we have those in the form of an acronym p-u-s-h push the things you should not do to save your marriage. Push, number one, plead. P, U, no unnecessary crying. S, don't start fighting. And H, don't hover. Don't shut them down. Don't put a GPS on their car. 
don't set up the neighbors, don't get a camera, don't em 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 employ an agency to come and check them out. That's not the way to get them back. As a matter of fact, that's more to facilitate their even going further away from you. Now, quickly, let me share with you the five things. I shared with you the four things you should not do to win your spouse back. I want to share with you now the five things that you should do if you want to win them back. Quickly. And it's in the acronym of S-M-A-R-T, SMART. S, stop push behaviors. And I just outlined to you what those push behaviors are, okay? Stop the push behaviors. Remember what the push behaviors? Don't plead no unnecessary crying. Don't start fighting. And don't shut them down. Don't hover. So first thing, stop S. Stop the push behaviors. Secondly, M is as in smart. M, manage items together. What does that mean? Take on the position of a business partner. Yes, they have left the home and you're crying, you're hurt. But it is still necessary that you interrupt on some transactional affairs. Number one, you may still have to relate to the kids. And so you have to speak with them. When are they coming to pick up the kids? How were they last night? How are they doing? You manage items together. No emotion. You must be in control now of yourself. No emotion one way or another, okay? You, you manage items together how are the kids and also you may have to file taxes together as you normally do okay you do that in a business-like manner from a business-like perspective no emotion just say okay when can we meet what do you need what paper do you need and send it along no emotion no name calling no fighting, no negativity. Just manage things like a business partner. So M, manage items together. Okay? As a matter of fact, in this time, it's even important to more call so they can get a sense of your modified self. No more do they see you as this emotional type who is always fighting and putting them down and berating and discrediting them. No, not at all. They need to start to get a sense now that you have changed. You are showing up differently. So it's good to call and not text. Call them so they can get a, a new sense of who you are. So talk with them from a, a managerial perspective, okay? That's SM, that's M. Manage items together. Then we have A, as in smart. A, allow your spouse to talk. How was your evening? How was yesterday? How were the kids? How is work going? And listen. You see, every person likes to know that they have another person who will listen to them. And listen intelligently. Again, Control your emotion. Just listen. And listen not to reply, but listen to understand. So what you're doing now, you're taking on a more intelligent approach to dealing with matters in the relationship. Listen not to reply, but to understand. And say, okay, oh, is that so? And you sometimes interject with words that will, will facilitate conversation. Okay. Oh, that must be difficult. Hmm. So how are you managing? Things like that. Start take on a conversational approach in the relationship. All right? So remember, allow spouse to talk. Allow your spouse to talk. That's A. 
Very important. So in this stage, we remember, be calm, be strong, and be gentle. Be calm, be strong, and be gentle. Every spouse, it doesn't matter who they are, they like, they admire a partner who is calm, strong, and gentle. That's attractive. That's the irresistible spouse. And so you want to give your spouse a, re a modified version of you, okay? Now we mo move to R, S-M-A-R. R, respond strong, calm, and gentle. Of course, this is a, is a continuation of number four of, of A, which is to allow your spouse to talk. So now you are responding strong, calm, and gentle. Wow. Hmm. She has changed. Oh, hmm. he's different. He goes to bed that night and he starts thinking. She goes to bed and she starts thinking, well, maybe I really left somebody who is of real true value. I might have just been trading 80 for 20. You, you allow them to start thinking because they are seeing a different person. That's how you, you commence the process of winning your spouse back. Then we go to the final one, which is T, the final component. T, S-M-A-R-T. Let me just repeat that. So S is what? Stop the push behaviors. Remember that. M, marriage items together like, a, like an astute business partner who is in control of himself or herself. A, allow your spouse to talk. Start being a great listener. And R, Respond strong, calm, and gentle. And finally, we have T. Take it one day at a time. It's not going to happen overnight. So don't be too hasty. Don't expect miracles to happen overnight. For you might have been dealing with years of abuse rejection, betrayal, hurtful words being thrown around, it will not necessarily correct itself overnight. So take one day at a time. Okay? So those I just want to share with you today, the four things you should not do when you're trying to save your marriage, especially when your spouse has already left the home. How to save your marriage when separated. Four things you should not do and the five things you should do. If you'd like to learn more about these, get join the 14-day boost program at, at mytimetospeak.org or learn more at lloydallen.org. Click the link below. As a matter of fact, we're going to ask you if you could just share this video so others can benefit from it as well. And like and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another notification. And finally, please comment below. I want to hear from you. Hi, Lloyd Allen again, wishing you well. And I hope to see you in this studio. Love you and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.